Hello, greetings, and welcome everyone to this news video. I am the Ninjaneer, and the topics for today are as follows. I am keeping my slot. My new goals with the channel and monetization. Tesla's first quarter numbers. Another day, another battery chemistry. Sarah Hardwick and Aptera. Tesla's August 8th, uh, August 8th Robo Taxi reveal. Uh, the Bink has arrived. Aptera's SEC filing. And things that I liked. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, those of you who have been to my channel, obviously everybody who's been watching, uh, can see that this is the channel for which I have uh, dedicated a ton of my time. Uh, some things will be changing, um, but first things first, I'm going to go ahead and keep the slot that I have for um, my uh, accelerator slot, Aptera. The reason I am doing that is because I feel that I can get um, much more value and the channel would get much more value and you guys vicariously would get much more value out of me actually reviewing and driving and moving around uh, in the Aptera and giving you my thoughts and uh, playing around with the pieces and, and uh, repairs and um, assembly, disassembly, all, all that stuff I feel like would be much more interesting than um, the uh, possibility of uh, giving away my slot. Um, that is the reason I am keeping my slot for the most part. Um, another big part of it is I am deeply eager to actually get my hands on one and uh, to drive one personally because I have not had that opportunity as of yet. As for my channel, things are going to be um, fairly interesting moving forward. I am playing around with ideas to um, have like memberships and things like that for the channel. Um, I plan on putting out two videos a week instead of the 1.5-ish uh, that I've been averaging. Um, Hopefully that way I can release both videos early on in the week for the uh, subscribe the people who have subscribed to the um, channel memberships and then um, have it uh, have the videos released on Monday and Friday uh, for those who have not subscribed to the um, subscription channel <clears throat> subscription channel thingy. Um, that's a good part of that. Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I'm trying to figure out how to add the most value to the channel um, so I can uh, get the most out of uh, the things that I'm trying to do monetarily. Uh, I am the kind of person that is extremely frugal and uh, have yet to um, do much of that uh, membership subscribing stuff to other people's channels and so I want to make sure that whatever I'm doing it is a really really good and really really worth it uh, because yeah that's just kind of the guy that I am um, all right all right we have some Tesla production numbers for the first quarter of 2024 essentially we have uh, as you can see here the model 3 and y were the bulk of their sales at 400 and, sorry a uh, bulk of their production at 412 thousand. Um, they had other models produced at about 20,000 and a total of 433,000. Their deliveries do not match their production numbers, which is fairly normal for any car company really. Um, but the total deliveries is uh, less than what people were uh, assuming that they would do. Uh, that caused their stock to downturn and a whole bunch of other uh, strange repercussions. Well, not strange repercussions, but a whole bunch of repercussions that uh, essentially caused um, a little bit of a tizzy. So yeah, as you can see, these are the numbers. Um, these numbers are less than what people were expecting. So therefore, uh, stock tank, stock tumble, stock trip, stock uh, not do as well as it was doing uh, for the better part of last year. Um, these numbers are not nearly as bad as people are trying to make them out to be, or some people are trying to make them out to be on the internets uh, and on news media and things, uh, mostly because this is still the most sales of any car company out there right now when it comes to electric vehicles. They sell the most. Um, BYD, who was touted 
uh, just last quarter as the uh, the Tesla killer when it comes to numbers, uh, they have fallen significantly to something in the neighborhood of 300,000 vehicles sold um, that were actually all uh, battery electric vehicles. Um, the reasons why this is happening is um, less than uh, apparent because there's a ton of factors in there but i do believe that some of those factors may be the fact that there are people that are actually buying electric cars that are not from uh tesla and byd and things like that globally um a whole bunch of other companies saw their numbers go up in value um sorry go up in um yeah up in value their their um overall sales increased um, for their electric vehicle markets. Uh, BMW, among others, have had a very good first quarter. Um, I'm assuming that there's uh, only so many people that are trying to uh, get an electric vehicle right now, especially in the U.S., because of uh, interest rates being through the absolute roof. Um, I just played around with the calculator just, just for fun to see uh, how much it would be to... Uh, get a model three and uh, the interest rates on the model three were like seven six uh, six points something really close to seven percent and i said to myself self this is going to be rough for everybody involved apparently it wasn't rough for everybody involved just rough for some of the companies that were selling the most um and not even rough so much as the numbers came in slightly less than what people were expecting um in the future I would imagine that this uh, eventuality is going to be uh, playing out for most of this year. Uh, until interest rates come down, not a lot of people are going to be selling um, as many cars as they're expecting. There are a lot of luxury brands that have made uh, progress uh, or made more sales, I'm assuming because uh, the people that can afford $100,000 vehicles are less preoccupied with the interest rates and things of that nature. There is a channel that I've talked about more than once on uh, this channel called uh, The Electric Viking. This guy always has a ton of fantastic videos. Uh, he does like mostly short form stuff, like he'll go over one story really in depth. Um, I've debated wanting to do that for a while now, but I know so many more people that do it better. I just, I feel like I should be a light shining to those really awesome channels so that at least people have a reference point to move to uh, those other channels and see them. So um, that is my little niche area, my place of, uh, my place of most value added right now. Uh, but anyway, yeah, long story short, Electric Viking is awesome. Uh, he put out a video about uh, this uh, new battery chemistry or new battery packaging more accurately that BYD is doing uh, to uh, make their LFP batteries more energy dense than any other LFP batteries in production right now. Uh, the bright side to that is that uh, the people who are partnered with BYD, aka Tesla and Ford and a whole bunch of other folks right now, will get the benefit Oh, wait, did I say I said BYD, didn't I? I didn't mean BYD. I meant CATL. Uh, CATL has a new battery that is more energy dense than any other battery out right now. And so people that are partnered with CATL, a.k.a. the uh, BYD folks, the Tesla folks, the Ford folks, the Chevy folks, all have the opportunity to benefit from this battery and uh, to benefit from the added energy density. Um, though the energy density is more than the most energy dense LFP battery at the moment, it is still less energy dense, or so I was led to believe, than the uh, current lithium ion batteries. So um, the main draw to this battery seems to be its uh, additional safety 
Um, it is much safer. You can't puncture it and have it explode into flames. Um, it is more robust, um, a little bit more temperature tolerant and all those sorts of things. Uh, those factors are what's making LFP more popular, not necessarily the energy density, but it is worth noting that the energy density of this battery from CATL is going to be uh, higher than any other LFP. So pushing LFPs more into the spotlight, um, making people look more into C8, uh, sorry, look more into uh, these LFP batteries in order to uh, increase energy density further and make them the dominant battery in the world. Um, so yeah, we'll see how that plays out. Um, I mentioned a little bit earlier uh, in my news videos uh, some months ago, I believe, that uh, CATL was working on batteries and putting them into um, um, vehicles and testing them. Uh, I believe some of the fruits of their labor was better packaging and therefore this new battery set was born. Sarah Hardwick is more or less parting ways with Aptera. We're going to talk about a little bit later about uh, the number of employees and, and why it went down and things of that nature, but one of those reasons is because Sarah Hardwick has decided to uh, make her own uh, consulting firm. Uh, she has raised something like $100 million, uh, well, more than a million, $100 million for Aptera to uh, move into the mainstream and get into production and uh, get better media coverage and all that kind of stuff. She has basically enabled the company to get to where they are now uh, through crowdfunding, and uh, she has decided that she wants to do that for other companies as well. Um, I still believe that she is working with Aptera in some capacity as maybe a consultant or something like that, but as of this time, they are not putting her as an employee on the sheet uh, for, um, for their number of employees on their SEC filing and things of that nature. That, that is her and uh, quite a few others that um, uh, have parted ways with the company. Uh, for one thing, to help Aptera stay lean and to have their cash burn uh, much lower, and for another, to uh, broaden her horizons and help other companies do what Aptera was able to do. There have been a ton of companies that have been talking, uh, sorry, a ton of YouTube channels that have been talking about the eventual uh, reveal of the robo taxi that is happening on August 8th. Uh, this saga began as a very messy. Uh, article by um, a company who I I don't even uh, remember the name of right this moment, but I'll probably put it in the corner up here somewhere. Um, anyway, they put an article out that said that the uh, the Model Two, which is the code name that everybody's given this uh, small twenty five thousand dollar vehicle, uh, is canceled. That article was another reason why Aptera stock, wow, Aptera stock, why Tesla's stock tanked for a uh, a good half a day until Elon Musk put out a tweet that said, "Stop lying, you're jerks," basically, and um, yeah, it, the stock kind of recovered over the rest of the day. Um, anyway, so this article made. Elon announced that he was going to put something out about the uh, the robo taxi, which is on the same platform as the Model 2, theoretically, um, as of the 8th of August. So yeah, we're waiting on the 8th of August. I am fairly excited to see what uh, the difference is between the robo taxi and the uh, aforementioned Model 2, that's not the name of the thing, uh, will be. I'm, a lot of people are speculating that it's just going to be a, a robo taxi is just going to be a model two without a steering wheel and other things to allow you to drive it. Um, yeah, if that is the case, then I don't think we're going to actually see the robo taxi in production or anything like that until uh, full self driving is done. I don't have any reference point for when that will be the case, but it seems as if it'll be sometime uh, mid next year, I believe, where it'll be. Uh, to a point where they're confident enough to say, okay, we don't need no steering wheel up in this, uh, up in this thing. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and uh, for now, we'll just know that uh, uh, there are some news companies that are more uh, genuine than others. And I will be uh, at least, uh, I will attempt to be one of the more genuine 
uh, more truthful, have my facts straight types first. All right, the bink has arrived and very, uh, a very large number of channels have talked about uh, the bink arriving um, in Carlsbad, including one of my favorite Aptera related channels, Aptera Owners Club. Uh, they have uh, done quite a bit to, um, to their video catalog lately. Um, let's see, something like six videos in the past 11 days, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, they are uh, uh, on an absolute tear. Uh, doing all those videos uh, back to back is something I can only dream of at the moment, but they are still all awesome. This is why I love this channel. They are just on their P's and Q's. Well, he is on his P's and Q's and uh, getting things done. Aptera's SEC filing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to um, X out of those. Uh, oh, wow. Aptera's SEC filing. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to uh, show you guys how to get to the document first because they have changed this website since the last time I was on and the changes are such that I had a really hard time getting to the actual document. So if you go into the SEC website, you'll have the opportunity to search for Aptera. After you search for Aptera uh, in the company search section, uh, you'll see, oh, wait a minute. Alrighty, so uh, after you have searched for Aptera Motors, oh, they don't let you do the thing. Uh, Aptera Motors Corporation, you will see that there is a long list of stuff here. Uh, you have the opportunity to click on the actual Form 1K open document, or you have the open filing section. If you click on the open document, it does not take you to the document. I do not understand for the life of me why they would do this, but uh, it does give you the opportunity to kind of get a brief overview of the numbers and things of that nature. So if you're a fan of the brief overview, then I would say to go ahead and click on um, that particular part of the form. But if you are the type of person that wants to read every single tidbit, detail, and uh, data point like I am, you can go ahead and click on the open filing section of uh, this particular website, and then you can go to uh, Form 1K HTM. When you click on that, it'll bring up the actual form with the ability to jump around to different sections of the form, etc. This is the deep dive, super into it, everything for it, all the statements, all the uh, disclaimers, all the everything. If you're the person that wants to read all of the things, you click on that button and not the uh, actual 1K open document. So if you want the document, don't click on open document. I'm sorry, I had to get that uh, that uh, rant out just a little bit. Anyway, so now that we are in the full details of everything page, um, this whole thing is uh, very interesting. I would suggest reading the entire thing. I'm not going to read the entire thing because I don't want to have a 45 minute video uh, just reading things. Uh, so yeah, uh, the broad strokes, the overall overview of this document is that there are people uh, that have been let go from Aptera. Their number of employees has gone down. Uh, their amount of cash on hand has gone up and then their uh, burn rate has apparently uh, stabilized. I, I, I say stabilized because they have stopped spending as much because they've done a lot of the tooling that they need for uh, the Aptera to become a thing. Um, they still have a lot more to spend, but for the next few months, I imagine what's gonna happen is they are going to just be kind of uh, coasting and putting together the vehicle and uh, just more or less spending capital on uh, people's salaries and things like that um, and going to DriftX and, and other events and, and marketing the Aptera. So uh, yeah, their burn rate has stabilized for the time being um, until they have uh, uh, had the ability to move on to their next phase, which is like mass production and uh, what have you. So. Yeah, that's the basic overview of this document. 
Um, there are other things that I would like to talk about that I will skip because Aptera Owners Club did a fantastic job of covering the document. I will link that video in the description as well. So uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, keep, uh, keep a move in here. It is now time for things that I liked. The things that I like for this week are as follows. Um, Aptera, sorry, um, Aptera Owners Club, I already talked about it. They are on a tear. They did a ton of videos this week. Um, I have a lot of admiration for people that are uh, doing a lot with their time. Um, I am not always able to do a lot on this channel, at least with my time. So every time I see somebody just boom, 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 pounding out videos, I'm like, hey, good job. So good job. All right. Uh, there was an interview done by Drive the Lightning that was absolutely spectacular and hilarious and fun. Uh, Chris McCammon is always a great person to interview. He's always very fun and very cool. Um, Drive the Lightning is probably the coolest uh, YouTube channel, the, the, the most interesting YouTube channel, the most fun YouTube channel, um, which is why they are my favorite Aptera related channel uh, on the platform. But anyway, when those two gigantically awesome and ses uh, successful and popular entities get together, uh, only fun times can be had. And that is one of the things that I can say for certain with regard to this interview. Let me go ahead and jump here. Um, Essentially, the interview went very well and it was very fun. One of the things that I saw that uh, was super amazing and super interesting and super cool was the fact that um, Chris McCammon actually stood on the Aptera. All right, folks, I'm going to see if you notice what I noticed. Did you notice what I noticed up here when this happened? Thing? I'm, I'm a, if you read my comment, you already know what I saw here. But essentially, he's getting on the top of this thing. There is nothing bending or flexing or giving way or anything like that. When they asked him to stand on the Aptera, I was almost positive that he was not going to because it was uh, going to bow and flex and be a bad look on Aptera. Not only did it not bow, flex or bend or anything, it was almost like it was like not even phase. Like what? Oh, is something happening? Oh, I don't notice it because because you're not heavy enough or whatever is happening. The strength of the Aptera's body structure is over the top amazing. I've never seen a vehicle besides maybe this Cybertruck now that has no flex whatsoever on the roof. I can I can think about sitting on my roof on my Acura and that bad boy will flex inwards. Um, <laughs> it, it, that's a, oh, it, an exaggeration, but basically I've never seen anything this strong uh, on its roof ever, which kind of backs up the claims that Aptera has the highest roof crush strength of any vehicle ever tested. Uh, I think that that claim has only gotten more credible um, with somebody uh, I'd say maybe 150, 160 pounds standing on the top of the Aptera and not even flexing. Yeah, bro, that's ironically, that is a flex for the Aptera. Anyway, um, very fun interview. I would suggest checking it out. Uh, there is another video by a channel called Chasing Aptera. Um, he talked about why he invested in Aptera as a as a concept. It was another fantastic video, uh, one that I would suggest you guys checking out. And uh, that will be about the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I am the engineer, and I'm going to be hoping and praying and waiting to see whether or not I can actually upload this video today. If all goes well, you will see this come out Thursday, April 11th. I have not revised my script, even though I know other things have happened because I didn't want to push my luck and um, lose my window to actually get this video out today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I am the engineer. Do all the YouTube -y things and I will catch you guys next time. Um, there's a couple of luxury brands that have made, oh my goodness.
My love, your alarm has gone off. In my room. All right.